day is day 228 of the year 2020, and the date is August 15, 2020. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Chronological One-Year Reading Bible. Today's scripture is from Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Ezekiel, chapter 3, starting at verse 16. Heading, A Watchman for Israel. After seven days, the Lord gave me a message. He said, Son of man, I have appointed you as watchman for Israel. Whenever you receive a message from me, warn the people immediately. If I warn the wicked, saying you are under the penalty of death, but you fail to deliver the warning, they will die in their sins, and I will hold you responsible for their deaths. If you warn them and they refuse to repent and keep on sinning, they will die in their sins, but you will have saved yourself because you obeyed me. If righteous people turn away from their righteous behavior and ignore the obstacles that put in their way, they will die. And if they do not, if you do not warn them, they will die in their sins. None of their righteous acts will be remembered, and I will hold you responsible for the deaths. But if you warn righteous people not to sin, and they listen to you and do not sin, they will live, and you will have saved yourself too. Then the Lord took hold of me and said, Get up and go into the valley. I will speak to you there. So I got up and went, and there I saw the glory of the Lord, just as I had seen in my first vision by the Kibera River. And I fell face down on the ground. Then the Spirit came into me and set me on my feet. He spoke to me and said, Go to your house and shut yourself in. There, son of man, you will be tied with ropes so you cannot go out among the people. And I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth, so that you will be speechless and unable to rebuke them, for they are rebels. But when I give you a message, I will loosen your tongue and let you speak. Then you will say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Those who choose to listen will listen. Those who choose to refuse will refuse, But for they are reb rebels. Heading, a sign of the coming siege. Ezekiel chapter 4, starting at verse 1. And now, son of man, take a large clay brick and set it down in front of you. Then draw a map of the city of Jerusalem on it. Show the city under siege. Build a wall around it so no one can escape. Set up the enemy camp and surround the city with siege ramps and battering rams. Then take an iron griddle and place it between you and the city. Turn toward the city and demonstrate how harsh the siege will be against Jerusalem. This will be a warning to the people of Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, lie on your left side and place the sins of Israel on yourself. You are to bear their sins for the number of days you lie there on your side. I am requiring you to bear Israel's sins for 390 days, one day for each year of their sin. After that, turn over and lie on your right side for 40 days, one day for each year of Judah's sin. Meanwhile, keep staring at the siege of Jerusalem. Lie there with your arm bared and prophesy her destruction. I will tie you up with ropes so you won't be able to turn from side to side until the days of your siege have been completed. Now, go and get some wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and emmer wheat, and mix them together in a storage jar. Use them to make bread for yourself during the 390 days you will be lying on your side. Ration this out to yourself. Eight ounces of food for each day, and eat it at set times. Then measure out a jar of water for each day, and drink it at set times. Prepare and eat this food as you would barley cakes. While all the people are watching, bake it over a fire using dried human dung as fuel, and then eat the bread. Then the Lord said, This is how Israel will eat defiled bread in the Gentile lands to which I will banish them. 
Then I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, must I be defiled by using human dung? For I have never been defiled before. From the time I was a child until now, I have never eaten any animal that died of sickness or was killed by other animals. I have never eaten any meat forbidden by the law. All right, the Lord said. You may bake your bread with cow dung instead of human dung. Then he told me, Son of man, I will make food very scarce in Jerusalem. It will be weighed out with great care and eaten fearfully. The water will be rationed out drop by drop, and the people will drink it with dismay. Lacking food and water, people will look at one another in terror, and they will waste away under their punishment. Jeremiah chapter 27, starting at verse 1, heading, Jeremiah wears an ox yoke. This message came to Jeremiah from the Lord early in the reign of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. This is what the Lord said to me, make a yoke and fasten it on your neck with leather straps. Then send messages to the kings of Edom, Moab, Ammon, Tyre, and through their ambassadors who have come to see King Zedekiah in Jerusalem. Give them this message for their masters. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. With my great strength and powerful arm, I made the earth and all its people and every animal. I can give these things of mine to anyone I choose. Now I will give your countries to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who is my servant. I have put everything, even the wild animals, under his control. All the nations will serve him, his son, and his grandson, until his time is up. Then many nations and great kings will conquer and rule over Babylon. So you must submit to Babylon's king and serve him. Put your neck under Babylon's yoke. I will punish any nation that refuses to be his slave, says the Lord. I will send war, famine, and disease upon the nation until Babylon has conquered it. Do not listen to your false prophets, fortune tellers, interpreters of dreams, mediums, and sorcerers who say, the king of Babylon will not conquer you. They are all liars, and their lies will lead you to being driven out of your land. I will drive you out and send you far away to die, but the people of the nation that submits to the king of Babylon will be allowed to stay in their own country to farm the land as usual. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then I repeated the same message to King Zedekiah of Judah. If you want to live, submit to the yoke of the king of Babylon and his people. Why do you insist on dying, you and your people? Why should you choose war, famine, and disease, which the Lord will bring against every nation that refuses to submit to Babylon's king? Do not listen to the false prophets who keep telling you the king of Babylon will not conquer you. They are liars. This is what the Lord says. I have not sent these prophets. They are telling you lies in my name, so I will drive you from this land. You will all die, you and all these prophets too. Then I spoke to the priests and the people and said, This is what the Lord says. Do not listen to your prophets who claim that soon the gold articles taken from my temple will be returned from Babylon. It is all a lie. Do not listen to them. Surrender to the king of Babylon and you will live. Why should this whole city be destroyed? If they really are prophets and speak the Lord's messages, let them pray to the Lord of Heaven's armies. Let them pray that the articles remaining in the Lord's temple and in the king's palace and in the palaces of Jerusalem will not be carried away to Babylon. For the Lord of Heaven's armies has spoken about the pillars in front of the temple, the great bronze basin called the sea, the water carts, and all the other ceremonial, ceremonial articles. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon left them here when he ex exiled Jehoiachim, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, to Babylon, along with all the other nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says about the precious things still in the temple in the palace of Judah's king, and in Jerusalem. They will all be carried away to Babylon, and will stay there until I send for them, says the Lord. Then I will bring them back to Jerusalem again. 
heading, Jeremiah condemns Hananiah. Jeremiah chapter 28, starting at verse 1. One day in late summer of that same year, the fourth year of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, Hananiah, son of Ezer, a prophet friend from Gibeon, addressed me publicly in the temple. While all the priests and people listened, he said, This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. I will remove the yoke of the king of Babylon from your necks. Within two years, I'll bring you all, bring back all the temple treasures that King Nebuchadnezzar carried off to Babylon. And I will bring back Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the other captives that were taken to Babylon. I will surely break the yoke of the king of Babylon that the king of Babylon has put on your necks. I, the Lord, have spoken. Jeremiah responded to Hananiah as they stood in front of all the priests and people at the temple. He said, Amen. May your prophecies come true. I hope the Lord does everything you say. I hope he does bring back from Babylon treasures of this temple and all the captives. But listen now to the solemn words I speak to you in the presence of all these people. The ancient prophets who preceded you and me spoke against many nations, always warning of war, disaster, and disease. So a prophet who predicts peace must show he is right. Only when his predictions come true can we know that he is really from the Lord. Then Hananiah the prophet took off the yoke from Jeremiah's neck and broke it in pieces. And Hananiah said again to the crowd that had gathered, this is what the Lord says. Just as this yoke has been broken, within two years, I will break the yoke of oppression from all the nations now subject to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. With that, Jeremiah left the temple area. Soon after this confrontation with Hananiah, the Lord gave the message to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke. You have replaced it with a yoke of iron. The Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, I have put a yoke of iron on the necks of all these nations, forcing them into slavery under King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. I have put everything, even the wild animals, under his control. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but the people believe your lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, You must die. Your life will end this very year, because you have rebelled against the Lord. Two months later, the prophet Hananiah died. Jeremiah chapter 51, starting at verse 59, heading, Jeremiah's message sent to Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah gave this message to Suriah, son of Neriah, the son of Meshiah, a staff officer. When Suriah went to Babylon with King Zedekiah of Judah, this was during the fourth year of Zedekiah's reign. Jeremiah had recorded on a scroll all the terrible disasters that would soon come upon Babylon, all the words written here. He said to Sururiah, When you get to Babylon, read aloud everything on this scroll. Then say, Lord, you have said that you will destroy Babylon so that neither people nor animals will remain here. She will lie empty and abandoned forever. When you have finished reading the scroll, tie it to a stone and throw it into the Euphrates River. Then say, In the same way, Babylon and her people will sink, never again to rise, because of the disasters I will bring upon her. This is the end of Jeremiah's messages. That is the reading for day 228. God bless each and every one of you, and may God be with you until we meet again.